Jess here and today I'm gonna to be trying my childhood favorite chocolates and sweets. This isn't gonna end well. So backing up a bit, I've been writing about food professionally in some way since 2012 and I specialized into desserts in 2015 and one of the things that's come with that is that I have both become more finicky about what desserts I eat and I am able to handle sugar less well. But it's vlogmas and to me the holidays are a lot about nostalgia and childhood memories and that'd be interesting to revisit these things that I'll probably never eat ever again as long as I live. And also I think you're gonna get a laugh out of it. Let's try some chocolate. Number one, Milky Way Midnight. Milky Way Midnight was my favorite as a teenager, like it was the pinnacle of Halloween candy to have that little bit of extra dark chocolate to be somewhat special. But okay, so this semi-sweet chocolate has sugar, chocolate processed with alkali, chocolate, what is chocolate in this context? Cocoa butter, milk, fat, soy lecithin, which is an emulsifier, natural flavor. That is not real chocolate. Real chocolate, at most, should have three ingredients. Cacao, cocoa butter, sugar. That's it. There's an argument to add vanilla that's still in the system and soy lecithin is very much being discussed in quantity right now because it is made with petrochemicals and so there's a big discussion about whether or not that is part of the craft chocolate system. But no, this is not chocolate. This is some kind of processed sugar thing. This smells fake. It smells like cocoa, but there's like this wax note to it. Oh, cheers. I don't taste anything. Oh my, there's some kind of a coconut, some kind of a sweet note. It's a good texture. It's soft and chewy and it kind of melts evenly, but I'm not tasting the intensity of burnt sugar notes of caramel. There is no darkness to the chocolate. I'm just tasting kind of soft, fluffy cocoa. Like where is the caramel in this? I am a caramel geek. So to taste nothing, it's just offensive. Where did it go? I remember tasting caramel as a kid. So pro tip, I always have water on set. Always, it's necessary for tasting things. And I'm just chugging it already and we're only at number one and there's six more. I'm doomed. So next, Twix. Twix were my creme de la creme of treats. Something about having shortbread, caramel, and chocolate together was just the best. And a few years back, I got into Batch PDX's Twix bars, which are spelled with a C-K-S. And they are quite tasty but I have not had one of these since I was 18, so we'll see. Oh, so this is known as fat bloom, which is in the fat starts to separate from the cacao and it doesn't taste good. I'm, I'm not surprised. This is a thing that happens in confections pretty regularly, even in the industry, but I'm not used to seeing it like this much on a commercial product like this. Now, chocolate with fat bloom, if it's a bar of chocolate, can be good for hot chocolate. Like, that's what I do all the time when I have spare bloomed chocolate. This is just gonna taste bad. Cheers. So the shortbread is kind of vanilla bland. The caramel has no flavor. And it's really dense. Like, I had to seriously chew to get through that. And just kind of sweet on the chocolate. So it's really vanilla shortbread cookie-ish and sweet. It's giving me a toothache trying the caramel on its own to see if I can get anything. I'm just tasting nothing, not even sugar. Might as well be eating paper. Number three, crunch. This was my jam. I didn't like the Halloween size as much. That little small piece of chocolate didn't have the right balance, but the big bars, that was where the money was. This is also claiming to be 100% real chocolate. Let's look at these ingredients though. Cocoa butter, non-fat milk, milk fat, lactose, soy less than natural flavor. So on the whole an improvement, but still why is chocolate as an ingredient in chocolate? That's always so weird to me. And also this is made by Nestle. Nestle is currently embroiled in Nestle V dough, which I need to catch up on all the notes about that, which is a fun case about international slavery in the chocolate industry. Yeah, that's still going on. Well, it smells kind of like cocoa. There's kind of a off dustiness afternoon, even from here, and it's got quite a lot of scent. From an Inclusions Geek point of view, it is very nicely loaded up on the crisp rice. It didn't really break with any temper, so that, that's gonna be fun. It just smells really musty. When I say mustiness in craft chocolate, it usually kind of smells earthy and dusty, but not unpleasant. This just kind of smells like a closed classroom. Cheers. The rice is actually very well done. It's got a really nice crisp crunchiness to it that makes it quite pleasant to eat in terms of the texture. Everything else is bad. It's just sugar. 
it's just nothing but sugar. It's like, boom, sugar. I should be kind of meaner to it by now because this is number three. And usually as you eat a lot of sugar, you kind of grow some tolerance, but wow, wow, it's so sweet. So I was sitting here for a second between takes because a plane was passing overhead and it's actually kind of making me queasy. Next, number four, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I stopped eating these in college. I was one of those kids who had the dining plan and used all my points to get that giant box at the end. That was amazing. Don't think it'll go amazingly now. It, it smells like sugar and peanut butter already and I've barely got this open. They both have bloom. It's kind of hard to see because it's right in the center, but yeah, it's got bloom. Yeah, it just smells of peanut butter sweetness. There's no chocolate scent to these. Cheers. So the flavor set me in two stages. First the chocolate, then the peanut butter. And the chocolate kind of is gentle and moves out of the way as the peanut butter takes completely over. The chocolate has no temper, it's just sort of there. And it's, and it's sweet, and there's no real cocoa flavor, it just kind of, it's like a holding zone for the peanut butter. The peanut butter is salty and sweet and has a lot of intensity, but it doesn't have a lot of peanut flavor. It's more like the concept of peanut in a paste with sugar. And there's this unpleasant afternote that I can't quite explain that's very chemical. It's just like sugar chemicalness. So now we're moving out of the milk and dark chocolate into Skittles. I, I really like Skittles in general, but wild berry was the fancy way to go. So I thought I'd grab one today. Oh wow, it's just like this very sharp sugary smell, like just immediately, it's kind of painful. We'll get a, a red one. I liked red and purple best. Cheers. Hmm. So it's like pops of juicy fruit punch, but it's very hard. This Skittle is very tough to chew through. And each time you chew, you get a burst of sugar and a burst of that juicy fruit punch. Let's try a berry. It's that same density, but it's got more of a bubblegummy berryness to it. It's just so sweet. How did I eat these as a kid? <laughs> Number six, Starburst. I remember eating these a lot when I was going to orchestra. Like I could have a few in my pocket and then eat them later. So let's go for strawberry. That was a popular one. This also smells fake. It's very wax. My brain is thinking of those like old timey red wax lips only with a strawberry note, but it's very faint. Like it's even faint compared to Pokey. Cheers. Least awful of the bunch. Super tough to chew through, like oh my goodness. But once it sort of warmed up, it had a pretty nice fake strawberry flavor. Like it was artificial strawberry and kind of pleasant. Still very sugary and as I'm sitting here, I'm just tasting sugar. Like it's, it's like having strawberry sugar on the palate but I don't feel nauseous and I don't feel really grossed out. It's just very hard to eat. So that's a bonus. <sighs> Last, one of my favorites, also the one I am most terrified of now as an adult, Hershey's Cookies and Cream. Let's look at the ingredients. Wait, where's chocolate? This isn't chocolate. This isn't white chocolate. This is an abomination. So you should see cocoa butter listed on the freaking thing to be white chocolate. That is a standard by the FDA. There should be sugar, cocoa butter, milk fat. That is the core of white chocolate. Cocoa butter isn't in here. I've read this over like three times now because I'm kind of horrified. The only mentions of cacao or cocoa or chocolate in this are that there's cocoa processed with alkali, which is definitely for the cookies, that's Dutch processed cocoa usually, but then contains 2% or less of chocolate. There's no cocoa butter. No, oh my, this is candy masquerading as white chocolate and I'm so upset about it now. Oh my goodness, so freaking mad. Like Hershey's? It doesn't even smell like white chocolate. So cocoa butter should have kind of a fattiness to it. It's a little sweet, not tropical, but sweet and almost buttery. This just smells like sugar, really sweet cookie sugar and wax. Cheers. Bear with me here. There is an actually vaguely okay cookie note, but it's dry, like the cookies are dry and not in a pleasant crunchy way. I'm just kind of drying and sweet and sugar and again waxy. It's not a pleasant experience. It's not a chocolate experience. I'm sad. This should not be your introduction to white chocolate. White chocolate has flavor. It has complexity. It has stuff happening. It is not this lifeless shell of a candy that they are calling a chocolate bar thing. There's no word of chocolate on the front. It is a creme bar because you see, 
Hershey's is being very careful. That is not listed as a white chocolate. It is cookies and creme, and that is what it is, but not in a pleasant way. There aren't any like cookies and cream dupes in the market that I can specifically recommend, but I'm going to find one specifically because of this video, because I am so mad. This is what people think white chocolate is. It's just, no. Like, no wonder people are coming to me or like, you might say to me, Jess, I don't like white chocolate. Of course you wouldn't like white chocolate if it tastes like that. I'm just mad. I need to calm down. <laughs> And I get it, craft chocolate is expensive. And white chocolate can be even more so because cocoa butter is a separate process and not every maker has access to the way to make it themselves. So it can, it can cost a lot, but you could buy smaller amounts of white chocolate and actually eat white chocolate as opposed to whatever that's meant to be. And it'll taste like chocolate or cocoa butter or at least have flavor. On that rage inducing note, those are my thoughts on my favorite childhood chocolates, which I am never eating ever again because I'm either now angry or terrified by them. Fun times! I'd love to know what your favorite childhood treats were in the comments. As always, it's been super great hanging out with you and I will catch you in the next video. Later!